Um, just um, asking a few questions and answering a few questions on um, Christianity and other religions. Okay, according to world religions, who is responsible for all the injustice in the world? That's a big question. Now this is according to most all the religions and all other religions except Christianity, gods are the cause of all injustice. And all um, all inhumane thoughts and wrongdoings have been inspired by gods into man. Okay, that's except Christianity. Okay, question two then should be raised. Why would people be held responsible for their wrongdoings if they were not the major cause of them? Um, if gods are the cause of any wrongdoing, it would not make sense for people to be held responsible. Okay. Um, this raises another question. Why is, the, why is the God of the Bible trustful but the gods of other religions not. Um, in all other religions, the issue of good and bad goes back to the time before creation. The eastern gods had partnership with the devil, and therefore were not immune to evil thoughts and acts. Allah caused Satan to err and made man vulnerable to sin. God themselves were not free of evil to stand for good and create a purely good creature. Um, how then could their creatures be free and have free will? Um, that is why they created man and woman in their own likeness, sinners and fallible, without the ability to choose truth or establish themselves in truth. If man is surrendered to Satan, he can no longer have freedom. Satan is the enemy of freedom. But in the Bible, sin originated from Satan and permeated uh, and penetrated into Adam and Eve. The Bible states that sin cannot have a trace in God's nature. In other words, sin is not eternal as it is in other world religions. God is eternally pure. In his purity, he desired to have pure men and women. Okay? Free of evil. Um, God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. That's uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 7. Uh, in James 3 17 it says, The wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere all these things say that God of the Bible is trustworthy okay number four why would the God of Christianity create humankind with free will okay God in his nature is free in accordance with his free nature he desired to give humankind free will so the free nature of God is the cause of free will in his creation. When we talk about the creation of man and free will, it does not mean that this free will can only decide between good and bad. So often we only associate free will with the question, what are we going to choose or follow? It is first about our identity, who we are or where we stand. This is what leads us to the choices we make. If the genesis of man was devoid of purity and based in dualism, like all other world religions, man would be unable to have free will, um, since evil is against it. It is for this reason that the free will, um, the right of free will, is totally absent in the genesis of man and all other religions. Man claims to have it because it is the desire of their hearts, but not the, not the desire of their gods. In other words, their gods are not aware of the cry of their hearts because they are not real gods. How, 
How can a God create evil if he himself is not evil? If a God is good, why would he create evil for the destruction of his own creatures and kingdom? Um, they in one way or another have a connection with evil, which is evident in their thoughts, speech or actions. This being the case, their followers could not stand for the truth. So they cannot say, we choose to be bad. It was their gods who were bad and created their creatures as evildoers. However, we have discussed earlier, such gods cannot exist. <coughs> they are man-made gods. Therefore, they are fallible um, and lack free, free, uh, lack free will. Only in Christianity is the creator completely distanced from any evil. He created man in accordance to his holy nature so that they could have free will. Uh, point number five. Is this free will a sign of God's incapacity to create infallible beings? Hmm. Good question. God did not create Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, as fallen or sinful as other religions state that their gods did. He created them pure and in harmony with his holiness. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Um, also, God did not create them equal to himself, as all-knowing people who could know the full depth of his glory, love and grace. Instead, he chose to give them free will with the ability to search and understand and live out these attributes of God. On the other hand, there was no pressure on them to live with God because they were gifted with the right of free will. Uh, they were placed under his leadership and expected to live in harmony with the laws of God's house in order to receive full joy. However, their free will gave them the ability to decide whether or not they wished to be part of God's kingdom. Um, the sort of free gift brought them face to face with a variety of choices. It was to help them see and understand and compare the full value of the life God had placed on them. Options and choices require curiosity, investigation, decision making. It is obvious that there, there is always temptations involved with different options. Temptation is not sin. It is with a man. Uh, it, it, it is with man so that he might be able to see the greatness of God's values in comparison with the values of the tempters and therefore allow the Spirit of God to transfer him from his present situation to a higher level. However, if man does not think big and falls short of the sovereignty of God in his confrontation with tempting, he will suffer, uh, lose and suffer. Uh, the power of temptation is not beyond the capacities of man and woman who are united with God and have become part of his family. Um, basically, temptation isn't sin, it is for you to see uh, that the people who try to tempt the differences between the righteous holy God and those who tempt who are the evil ones. So temptations themselves illustrate this. So far for God, the main purpose of, the, the purpose of allowing man to encounter temptation was not that man should cease relationship with him and be alienated from him. Instead, it was so that man can understand that God is in control of everything. Man, therefore, needs to abide in him with increasing maturity, knowledge, confidence, and loyalty in order to overcome all temptation. So with God, it is impossible for man to be defeated by temptation. Um, the gift of God of free will was to allow man to discover the significance of his place in God's kingdom and the extent of God's love towards him. This intimate relationship with God is the source of man's confidence and eternal joy. God has wonderful hidden messages behind every temptation for man to discover through the gifts of his free will. Searching, thinking, comparing. If we want to put this message in our own words, it might be as follows. Um, I, this is God speaking, have a creative purpose by giving you the gift of free will. I lead you into the realizations of various things ultimately of my greatness. I am perfect, so treasure me above all others and follow me and rejoice in me. Um, 
So this characteristic of free will, man must go through many experiences in order to understand the greatness of God with open eyes to treasure him above everything. He's expected to discover the full scope of God's transformational purpose in his gift of free will in order that we might be victorious, victorious over temptation and transformed to a higher glory. The transformation of purpose of God in temptation comes to light in the stir of Jesus uh, being confronted by Satan. The firm standing of Christ against the suggested options of Satan fully illustrates God's expectation of every person's attitude towards temptation. Satan tempted Jesus to eat the bread of his evil mind, to throw himself down from an uh, elevated position, and to change his citizenship from the kingdom of light to the kingdom of darkness. As a result of his refusal, Jesus, that man, uh, is to overcome temptation by living with every word that comes from the mouth of God, by standing in the heavenly and perfect position that God has provided for him, and only by worshipping the King of Kings, the creator of the universe, um, for all those who take their eyes off God and his advice aim to live without him. And their temptations, confrontation with temptations will fail. This is why Adam and Eve fell and lost um, the perfect life of God that God had provided for them. God expected Adam and Eve to glorify his perfect, uh, uh, basically, um, free will allows us to see the glory of God. Um, yeah, that's basically what it's for.